gather here today to celebrate the life of a great man, Tom Jones Sr. A man that's going to be sorely missed by us all. If you knew him, you were blessed to have known him. I had the privilege for the last 10 years to be his pastor. And I want to say that he could not have been a better member. He loved the church. He loved the Lord. And what a blessing it was. Today, we want to take time to try to encourage your heart as we think about Brother Jones. We could be here all day. I could share story after story. We're not going to do that, but I hope what we do will be a blessing and encouragement. The Bible said in John 14, said, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am there, you may be also. And Thomas said to him, Lord, how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way. Truth and the life, no man comes unto the Father but by me. Just before we get started, really, I, I've had a poem, I've read it at several funerals, but I've not read it a lot because I want it to mean what I read. And truly, I believe this poem fits from the top. And I, many of you probably heard it, but let me just read it to you today. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between the years. For that dash represents all time they spent alive on earth and now only those who love them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own cars, the house, the cash. What matters most is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard or things you'd like to change, for you never know how much time is left that still can be rearranged. To be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect, and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you lived your dash? And I thought that fit him totally because literally I could not say anything today and everybody would know he preached his own funeral on the way he lived, the things he did. Got on the internet the other night, just fooling around, and I said, I'm going to look up all the adjectives for the character of a, of, a, of a good man. And I read them and found that he qualified for all of them. And I will just read them, it won't take but a minute. Ambitious, brave, calm, delightful, eager, faithful, gentle, happy, Jolly, kind, lively, nice, obedient, polite, proud, funny, thankful, victorious, witty, wonderful, and zealous. And I think all of those signify the man that we're celebrating his life today. Let's bow forward a prayer and then we'll have a song. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for the Word of God. We thank you, Lord, for Brother Tom. Thank you for the example he set. And Lord, use this time, not as just another funeral service, but Lord, convict our hearts to see that Brother Tom lived a good life. He loved the Lord and he put him in the proper place. And he blessed lives all his life. And Lord, now we're left to carry on the legacy that he set forth. Father, I pray today that you'd be with the family. I pray that you'd minister to them, meet their needs. I pray that you would guide and direct in their lives. Lord, just have your willing way, we pray. And we'll thank you for what you do and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen.
I'm not saying he was perfect, but I don't really know anybody that is perfect. But I tell you to this man, I find no fault in him. He was a blessing to my life. He loved his family. Miss Betty, who he so lovingly called Bubba, for 61 years. She said the other day, I don't know who's going to call me Bubba. I said, Tom, I think you'll have to take it up there. Call me up. I'll just pick up that and do that. But I tell you, he loved this lady. I tell you, he loved them with all his heart. And they went through some difficult times physically, both of them. God was with them. It was a great blessing to them. And then God gave them three wonderful children. I think of Darren and Tom and Cindy. And uh, what a blessing that was. And he, he loved them. And then, of course, they married, and Cindy married Morgan Shepherd. And I tell you, he loved racing. So, Betty, that was a great. Now, nothing. That's not the only reason he loved Morgan, I promise you, but it helped, you know, that he was a NASCAR race driver. And I remember when he started coming to church, he brought me posters and all kind of things to go in the office, and I appreciated it, and surely we remember Morgan as he's raced through all these years, and Brother Tom was proud that he had a daughter on that's married to Morgan Shepherd. Then Tom married Becky, and I tell you, Becky, he couldn't have been treated any different. And any other family member? She literally became his daughter. And so what I've done today, and I'll get back in a minute, I just have to touch right now with that, but I asked the kids if they wanted to just give me some thoughts and things that they remember about their dad. Aaron at the funeral home the other day, he made a statement. He said, I guarantee you one thing, me and Tom got more whippings than Cindy did. And I bet you that's true, because I'm sure that this Cindy was his, his queen, his prince, princess, and he loved her. But I asked him, I said, if you would write something, I want, I want people to hear from y'all. And so they wrote some short things, and let me just read this from Cindy. She said, well, and boy, this is a good one. She said, when we were growing up, Daddy bought us, brought many different cars that he owned that he always thought was beauty. That sounds like Tom. It doesn't matter. Whatever he had, it was probably, you know, the beautiful but he said, uh, and so he even bribed me once when I was 16 by promising if I would campaign extremely hard for him while running for the office of sheriff, and he won, that he would buy me a brand new Camaro. Well, as far as the Paula knows, I did not get the Camaro. But one day, he brought home a real doozy, a black pattern with red and white plaid seats. I usually did what Dad said, but that day I told him I was sorry. But that was one car I would never be driving around town. It was just too ugly for me. And I'm sure he accepted it with grace. Tom had a thought, and he shared this with me dozens of times, and I'm glad he shared it today. Tom said, when I was 10 years old, my daddy bought me a mini bike, bought us a mini bike. It was really slow, so I figured out how to bypass the government. So it would run 50 miles an hour. We lived on Chickapin Plantation down a long dirt road. I couldn't wait until Daddy came home so I could show him how fast I made the mini bike. So he came home that night and I was waiting on him. I let him go by and I got behind him and then I pulled out and I passed him. I pulled up in the front of the house. I was so proud because I'd outrun Daddy. Then he gave me the worst whipping I ever had. <laughs> So from that day on, I had mixed emotions about speeding. But as soon as I got into racing, Daddy always helped me to go faster. He was my number one hero and my best friend and best daddy. And I tell you, he loved his children. And hey, you said, well, he whipped them. Yes, sir. my dad whipped me too. But he whipped us so we would turn out the way that these kids have turned out and hopefully the way that I've turned out and many others have. And then Becky, she wrote just a... Uh, uh, this when she wrote this sometime back, she gave this to Brother Tom one Father's Day, and I had read it, and he loved to read it, and they had held on to it for all this time. But uh, Becky said, um, I want to start by saying that my dad is the best. He's an instructor. Proverbs 13, 1, a wise son heareth his father's instruction. Dad always tries to be a good example for his children, but also for anyone else. I've never heard my dad talk about anyone or complain of anything. He is the most selfless person I know. I often dreamed when I was a little girl, I would have a dad like him. 
Tom has told me the story after story about growing up with Dad. And at times, I envied what he had as a child. One day I realized that I have all that Tom has right now. Dad has loved me unconditionally and so much more than I could have ever dreamed as that little girl. If I could have asked the Lord for a special order, Dad, it would have been the one he blessed me with. My dad is truly a kind, trustworthy, honorable father, and I proudly call him my dad. I can never thank him enough for the love that he shared with me as a child of his own. A father who teaches his children love and responsibility provides them with a fortune. On this Father's Day, Lord, I thank you for this gift you've given me through my dad. St. Francis 9, 15. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. I love you, Dad, with all my heart. And you have made me a happy little girl. Then I have one other one, and this was written by Olivia. I want to say Olivia had a, was very instrumental, literally, I, I think, in uh, helping to get Tom and Becky in our church. They were looking, and uh, they'd be headed to church. And, of course, she had gone with Grandpa to church and at our church, and she liked it. And so uh, Brother, Tom, he, Brother Tom Sr. got a kick out of it because he said on the way to church on Sunday morning, Tom and Becky, were, they were visiting around, and uh, they were wondering which church they were going to go to, and, and Olivia broke out with victory in Jesus. And so Brother Tom said, I, uh, he got the hint, and I think that was the first day they came. But anyway, Olivia was special and close, and she said to my best friend, there are 170,000 words in the English language, yet there is a, it, it doesn't exist a word it binds together men the meaning of being a hero and still remaining humble. No word describes someone who is so direct and accountable, but yet so gracious in all his ways. No singular word spoken can illustrate the fire and brimstone, while also deliver the forgiveness and compassion of Christ. Not one word can personify someone who walks through tribulation with a smile on their face and the joy of God in their heart. No word existing in the human language can encompass all these components of one kind is one singular word. But I believe the word grandpa is a pretty close fit. You made me what I am today. My first words were because of you. Three, four, two. Three, four, two. Mom and Dad were a bit upset at the number to the Western Channel on TV where my first words and not their names. You started a passion in my life. You brought my first horse and the six after that. Four years ago, I was so excited to tell you I finally bought my own horse with my own money. I was going to train my first horse, start my career. You told everyone I was going to be the bronc riding cowboy. You told everyone around you, this is my grandbaby, Libby. She's at Berry College. She's going to be a doctor. And I am, with, it, with you at the forefront of my mind, I'm going to walk across the stage with a degree in hand. Yet with what you call that big old science degree, I can't think of the right words. 170,000 words in existence. None of them can be put together properly to say goodbye to a man like you. So with peace in my heart, I don't say goodbye, only I'll see you soon. With love, your neighbor. I want to say, obviously, it's very, very plain that he loved his family. He loved his grandchildren. He loved them dearly. But he didn't just stop there. He loved all our grandchildren at church. I know that when my grandchildren come along, uh, he always uh, treated them with such, uh, he could have been, he could have been another grandpa for them. Often when they came to church, Brother Tom would always have Levi, who especially loved cars. He always had a car for him. And the other day when it was discussed that Brother Tom had passed on, and I'm sure at three years old, he don't understand all the implications. He went into his room and he got all the cars that Brother Tom had, had given to him, and he brought them in the living room because... Brother Tom had an impact on people's lives everywhere he went. He showered them with gifts, and not just Levi, Ava, and all the other kids that come through. He always had things for them. He loved them. He loved racing. And I tell you, nothing, I mean, there was nothing that could hardly stop him from racing. I went to several races with him, and he let me ride on the golf cart with him, which I was privileged to do. But let me tell you about him. He loved his church so much that he made a pact with Tom and the rest of the crew. And he said, here's the deal. We're going racing Saturday night, but we're going to be not in church, but we're going to be in Sunday school in church on Sunday morning, no matter what time we get in. And there's many days that they get in at 5 o'clock in the morning. 
they'd be sitting there in the back pew. And hey, I really didn't see too much of a problem with them sleeping there in the vestibule. If they did, they got by without me noticing. But they were there. Brother Tom loved the church. He loved the people of the church. I, I bet you if we was to count the number of times he missed, I know over the years there would be several because he was in and out of the hospital a lot. But I tell you, if he was not in the hospital, he could get up out of that chair and, and he was going to be at church. And he was going to be there because he loved being there. In fact, there's some pennies in a little tray over here that has uh, Cindy was stamping out the cross and those pennies. That was his tool for witnessing to people everywhere he went. He would give them a penny and he would tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I will say that because of what he did at our church, many of our church members are there because of him. I got texts this week saying, you know, where is your church because of Brother Tom? Everybody, he was always out looking for people that didn't go to church anywhere and trying to get them to come. And sometimes he'd find people that was going to church somewhere and try to get them to come. And I'd say, Brother Tom, we're not trying to take nobody away, but he loved the church, but he loved me. He's gave me so many showering words of praise. He's called me the best pastor there ever was, and we all know that cannot be true. But yet he loved me that much. I'd go visit him at the hospital. And the nurses would come in. And he said, you need to come to our church because this is my pastor. And he's the best pastor there is. And you need to come hear him. I was gracious and thankful. And friend, he was just that type of a man. He'd give me the shirt off his back. He bought me shoes. Sometimes they weren't the kind I wore. Sometimes he'd buy me shirts, and sometimes that wasn't the kind I wore, but he wanted to give me something. And I loved him dearly. And I want you to know, he loved others, as it's already so rightfully been said, so selflessly. But most of all, he loved the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, I'm so grateful today that he loved the Lord with all his heart and all his soul. Second of all, it's precious because he didn't suffer anymore. I think Olivia put it in words better than we could say, but honestly, we cannot describe what this man has gone through in his life. And I guarantee you he'd be at church and he'd be in so much pain, but I promise you, very seldom did we know it because he would keep it from us to the best of his ability. He's fallen several times. I tried to get him a long time ago to use a walking stick. He said that was for old people. Finally, in his later years, he did start carrying one. I started working on a wheelchair. He said, man, get out of here. Not interested in no wheelchair. But I tell you what, he was a determined man. But I'm grateful today that he's not suffering anymore. Somebody said as they viewed him a while ago, he's at peace. Friend, I'm going to tell you today, Brother Tom Jones is at peace. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 20, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And listen, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. And we say today, Brother Tom is finally at home, and he's at rest with the Lord Jesus Christ. I tell you today, we was talking the other day, we was talking about Haiti, he was gone, and I believe it was Miss Jones said, we wouldn't wish him back, because he's in the most wonderful place that there is. And then just in the closing with the last thought, he's precious in the sight of the Lord, because he knew the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. If you don't hear anything else that I've said today, can you say this? Brother Tom lived for one reason and one reason only. And that was to point people to saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. 
whether we admit it or not, we must all understand that every one of us is born into this world a sinner. I tell you today, we don't, he didn't go to heaven because he was a good man, but he was a good man. He didn't go to heaven because he hardly ever missed church, although he never did. He went to heaven because one day he had a personal experience with Jesus Christ. And he wanted everybody else to have a personal experience with Jesus Christ. And he shared it everywhere he went. He was not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it was the power of God and the salvation to everyone who believed it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And the only hope that I have, the only hope that you have, as we pass by this casket today, as we leave this cemetery, what we understand is if we're not saved, if we don't know the Lord, we'll never see him again. And I believe with all my heart, Brother Tom's going to be waiting on the other side. When I get to church often, Brother Tom would go in and we had a few that sat back and people come to the door and walk in front of it. So when he got there, he would always pop down there on that pew where he could speak to everybody when they came in. And I tell you, sometimes he beat me there and he fussed at me because I wasn't there. One day he got there a little early. I don't think he mind me telling you this, but I got there and he wasn't there. And in a few minutes he got there. And he got all over me because he wasn't there. He said, man, I was here a while ago, and this was like an hour early. So he said, I need to get there to use the bathroom. You didn't have that building a lot, and I had to go find a place to go. I said, Brother Tom, I'll try to be there from now on. But I'll tell you what, every time I went to church, he was sitting there waiting on me to greet me. Oh, I've been this much worse. I'm going to miss that greeting. But I know that I'm going to see him again someday because I know that I know the Lord that he knew. And I know that he's pointed us in the right direction. And friend, if you knew him today, your life was blessed. I know him. He was a member of the church for four hours for 37 years. He was a member of my church for 10 years. And I believe he was a member of another church right after he got saved for just a short period of time. Brother Tom's been in church over 50 years. And he was there because he loved the Lord with all of his heart and all of his soul. But can I tell you today, the reason we have hope is because God sent his son into the world to die for our sin in order that we might have eternal life. The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I look out around today and see some of you standing and some of you I know and some of you I don't know. But I tell you, he loved his friends. He loved Hardee's. He loved not Hardee's, but I think he loved those people that went to Hardee's. And he enjoyed the fellowship that he had. But I'm going to tell you, we're going to miss him. But I don't think he's going to miss us. But I think he's going to be looking for us to join him one day in that wonderful place called heaven. And I submit to you today, if you never in your life put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible said today is the day of salvation. It's not a matter of what we can do. It's a matter of what Christ has done. The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the mouth, or with the heart, may believe that the righteous and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. He said, for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Somebody might say today, I'm not good enough. Friend, none of us was good enough. But God saved all of us. Yeah. 
are with the word of God. And the Bible tells us in the last days, perilous times should come. I don't think it's going to be long before we're going to join Brother Tom in that place called heaven. If we do, what a wonderful day it's going to be. And I trust today that you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. And today all of us needs to give thanks to Brother Tom Jones Sr. is our friend. Our Father, Lord, we ask now that you bless now as Randy comes to sing. I pray that you would guide and direct in Jesus' name. Wish you 